Mayor Hawkins for treating the building. Macola, is that how you say it? Mayor Hawkins, Macola? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that complimentary treating. And we're going to have the food in a few minutes, and as we work through this meeting, then we can eat at the same time. Mr. Esters? I don't think I need a microphone. I you, you don't? I don't need a microphone. I didn't want it, but I then I grabbed the wrong one. I don't want my school principal. I know I'm hard. <laughs> now, I just want to thank y'all for including out there in y'all plans and you're, you're moving forward. I'll uh, give you a quick update. You know, we're still trying real hard to get a new campus over by the Walmart. Uh, your community, several community members have been amazing to, to donate some property. Uh, we got bumped up from a, or we, we think we'll get bumped up, we're pretty confident, from a, a Category 5 funding priority to a Category 1, which means the funding may flow this year instead of in three years like we thought it would. So, we're excited and we look forward to seeing the new campus uh, break ground, hopefully, in the next several months. Uh, in the meantime, we're working on putting in a simulation center, a simulated hospital. Uh, we don't know exactly where yet. We still have our, our, our old campus uh, that we, we moved out of, but there's a building there that's still in great shape. Also, there's another building we're talking about city about using but essentially what that'll be is it'll be a hospital with high-tech mannequins where nurses can train without hurting people which is always good we don't we don't like uh, we don't like hurting people but the, the beauty, beauty about that is we can rotate as many nursing students through that as we can so the vision is to make bachelor kind of our allied health hub where all of our nursing students can come through and do a rotation in, in Morehouse Parish and in Bachelor so that they can get familiar with what you have to offer and who knows, maybe we can pick up some nurses and some professionals in your community. So that's just what I wanted to share with y'all this evening. Again, thank y'all for, for having us and, and we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Mr. Esters. Let me recognize all of our elected officials. Please stand up. Thank you so much for coming. We certainly want to work together in unity to make Bastrop and Morris Parish the best that it can be. And we have before us a lot of opportunities to do that. And you represent Bastrop and Morris Parish. Thank you, the health care, economic development, education. And we're going to be conducted in this meeting by M5, Jamie Mayo, we're doing a SWOT analysis. We need your input on the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. And this plan will go into a, an overall strategic plan, and we will set goals on how to move Basher forward. I still have the old plan that was done under the general administration, and there were seven goals, and I pulled them out, and I looked at them, and I thought, how close have we come? But we, we have another opportunity. So let's seize the moment. I, I believe the food will be ready in just a few minutes. And we will just help yourself and make yourselves at home. In the meantime, let's just socialize until we form the line. Thank you for coming. Somewhere around here, probably not that many. I missed more than I made. But we'll jump right into it because I know you've been very, very patient. Law enforcement people, I want to acknowledge you as well, as well as uh, public safety folks, our fire folks. M5, uh, M stands for Mayo, it's five of us <laughs> in our household. And um, well, my grandson is there too, but he says he's not a Mayo, so he's a Williams, so he says he should be M4 plus W. <laughs> but I'm blessed to have my brother with me now. He retired from Alabama and he came in and he is, uh, is an associate of M5, and he'll be assisting me here. We're going to go through the SWOT analysis uh, as quickly as we possibly can. I know you're busy. We appreciate the fact that you are here because um, before you do anything, you've got to 
do everything that you can to see what the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. We have the medical profession here, so we do appreciate you guys. And there is a term from a doctor that he coined this, term, this coin uh, many years ago. He said that uh, when you go to the dentist, <laughs> Dr. Sanders, you go to his office, and you go in, and if, you, uh, if he gives you a prescription without diagnosis, that's malpractice, right? Before you even know what the problem is, and he just gives you a prescription when you come in. Well, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice, right? I don't define that word. Uh, <laughs> you know, I understand. <laughs> okay. Well, so it is with anything else when you're doing a SWOT analysis. If you go and say, well, okay, this is what we need to do without coming up with a diagnosis, then you got some issues. And these are type things that we did uh, as mayor of the city of Monroe for 20 years, almost 20 years, and as a city council member, we always did the SWOT analysis. Time we got in, we started doing the SWOT analysis, looking at the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And quite frankly, that's how we were able to build a 21st century new airport, uh, one of the best public safety centers in the South. And that's how we were able to get some other things do done. If you're in Monroe, you see the frontage road uh, on the south side that's about to be done. That took 15 years. Then a water treatment plant. I can go on and on, but those are the things that we did, but we didn't just up and to do it. Now, here in Bastrop and Morehouse Parish, you have so many positive things. But one thing that you see is human nature that people will always tend to the negative things. You ask how things are going on here in Bastrop and Morehouse Parish, they'll go to the negative things, and that's human nature. But in order to promote a market, there are a lot of things that you have to do and identify to be able to do so. And that's why we do all of this. There's a three-step process in, in the SWOT analysis in which we do. The first one is why you're here tonight. We look at the strengths. We look at the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then after we do that, we go straight to the strategy part. We do a strategy or strategies from what come out of the SWOT analysis tonight from education, economic development, and healthcare. We've already done crime and we've also done beautification. We put all that together. There's nothing complex, it's simplistic. We, uh, we don't try to do this 100 page study and that type of thing. We just do basic, simple things that will help us get to the next step. That's the second step, to put the strategy together. Now, the final step or the third step is probably the most difficult step because that's implementation. And when you don't, when you get to that part, that's where all these plans that you have that you put together, it's time to, to implement. And some of the things that you come up with implementation may be a little slow because it may be because you need some funding to be able to do so. There are opportunity to get some funding but there may not be opportunity to act swiftly with some things. But there are other things that very, very minute that you can get done pretty quickly. Again, when I was mayor of Monroe, we, we got a class one fire department, and I want to applaud the city of Bastrop for having a class one fire department. Yes. <laughs> and at the time that we were able to do it in Monroe, there were only like I think about 35 in the whole United States. There's 45 rated communities in the whole United States, and there was only 35. And since that time, the city of Bastrop has become a class one fire department, and that is significant. Now, how many people brag on that here in Bastrop and Morehouse Parish? <laughs> the sheriff does, <laughs> but that is significant because your property insurance is lower because of that. Now, you may not see it in some instances because if your insurance goes up, that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that your uh, property insurance, uh, your class one fire department is caused to go up. It may be because of something else, fires or other type of things that have, that have happened. Now, Bastrop also, and I, I've shared this with, with Mayor Olive, we've talked a lot about this. You have four mayors that are still living here. That's an asset. You've got four mayors from here. We've got three mayors here tonight. It's just two of us are former mayors. 
Mayor Hawkins and myself, and of course our mayor here, Mayor Olive. And so that is significant. That's a positive. Not very many communities can say that. Not only that, but also current and former city council members. So having said that, I'm asking my brother Melvin to come up, and we're going to get right into it. And starting with the strength, and as I said, this is a working committee. It's a, it's a working meeting. And so we're going to try to get through it as fast as we can because I know you have other things. If I was at home, I'd be watching Andy Griffin and, and um, family, a few, and some of those type things. So I'm sure y'all record them, right? <laughs> we're going to ask him to bring that in the middle so you can see that. Now, for the sake of things that I know you're going to miss, you know, we do our research and plus things that I already know by heart about Bashup since this is my home, but there's some things I always look up to to make sure that we've got it all. So things that you don't come up with tonight, you know, we will incorporate into because those are things that you need to, uh, to be incorporated. But this gives you an opportunity to be able to, among each other, be so, oh, yeah, you know, that is, a, that is a strength that we have in Bastion. Now, this is not an opportunity to bash any organizations or anybody, but it is an opportunity to be, be uh, honest about certain things. But we want to be professional about these types. We're not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but we are here to be honest about uh, some of the, especially when you get to weaknesses and threats. So here we go. I'm going to start out, um, and he's going to record these. What's the first strength? of the city of Bastrop? Fire rating. Okay, great. That's a good place to start. What else? Things that you have here in the city of Bastrop or adjacent to the city of Bastrop that causes Bastrop to be as solid as it is. We have our own hospital. Have our own hospital. Morehouse General Hospital. I don't know why Mama took, well, I know why. I had to go all the way to Conway. <laughs> I grew up in Marouge. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Couldn't afford to go to Morehouse General <laughs> from Marouge. Okay, what else? Sports, Sportsman Paradise. Very good. What else? How do you say that? I always say Shenanny Hall. <laughs> I know that's another one. Yeah, that is very much so. Very good. We were going through there one time, and I said, Shannon, and my wife looked at me and said, that's not what that says. I <laughs> said, that's what we know it as. What else? Bust a break. Good. All the sports in paradise. Hope you can work right fast enough. <laughs> what else? We have an own high school. Bastrop High School, you also have, what other school do you have that's a high school? The charter school and what else? And Prairie View. That's why when we think of those things, you think of what all's within close proximity that's part of what makes it what it is. And that's significant. Public, private, parochial, all those are positives. What else? Dependable water, good water supply. Okay, I have to probe you a little bit. What a, transportation, um, political subdivisions, affordable housing is here. Okay, affordable housing. I like the way you put that, too, affordable housing. You know, I was just in Atlanta the last month. I have a client over there. And they have these challenges over there, and these are some of the same thing. We know Atlanta is one of the big cities in the, in the south, but they have some of the same challenges as they are, are mecca for business and a lot of different things, but they have these same challenges. In fact, you got a portion of them trying to succeed from the uh, city called Buckhead. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. That's one of the issues that they're going through now. Good. What else? Rail access, good. 
I mentioned political subdivision. Nobody said that yet. What about the political subdivisions? Some of you are here. <laughs> okay, heavy agriculture base. Uh, forestry. What else? Very good climate. In some places right now, it's below temperature, and we can deal with this type, right, right now. So it's very pleasant. Don't have overcoats on right now. Good people. You know, it's interesting that you said that because a lot of times that's the first thing that most people say. Got good people. So with those good people, what do you do with? Because it takes coming together to do anything, unify regardless of what challenges that you may have. Having those good people, that's what makes up a community, right? You probably have a lot of those, huh? I won't ask you how many, but, but faith-based. We'll say faith-based is very, very strong here in Moas Parish in the city of Bastrop. What else? Very good. It's the seat. Bastrop is the seat of the parish, which means that you have people coming in from Collingston, Bonita, Jones, Oak Ridge, Galleon, did I name them all? Bigman? <laughs> Everywhere. Marooch? I miss Marooch. How did I miss Marooch? Yeah, man, they're going to... Collingston? Yeah, everywhere. That's right. I wonder who said Collingston. <laughs> Our president over there, Ms. Tabby. What else? Right. And how many major highways do you have coming through Bastion? Okay, two U.S. You have 165 and 425, and then you got 139. But y'all think that's significant? Highway 2? Yeah. When you look at the history, they say they call the crossroads was what? Washington and Madison or 165? I mean, I, we see a lot of good things when you look it up. But other people are looking up, too. We start talking about economic development and education. They're looking at more things than just one particular thing. But on your website, when they Google you, the question becomes, what are they looking for? What are they looking at when they... Sure, everybody talks about crime, and we're going to get to that, too. But they look at a lot of different things as it relates to coming into the community. What else? Okay. Working across political subdivisions is, is really good. Everybody's limited on resources. Been cuts always made. So when you put Bastrop, Morehouse Parish, the hospital, I don't know if I call the hospital subdiv a political subdivision, but you, you have a tremendous economic impact. The healthcare folks being able to work together on projects, it means a whole lot. A whole lot. What else? Yeah, over there by, um, that, what is that, Washington? North Washington. That's going to be pretty significant. And working on something else, right, Mayor? <laughs> she didn't hear me, but something else that has got a good chance of coming, too, in that proximity. I won't, I won't spill the beans. Trainable workforce. Okay, we'll squeeze some of this in. That's great. You guys are great. And I think I heard something else. Yeah, right. State disaster shelter. Guess what? <clears throat> when, when they come in and they're going to have needs for stuff, for food and clothing, a lot of different things. When they came into Monroe several years ago after Katrina, uh, two years in a row, the first year we had a $5 million surplus and the second year a $4 million surplus. And that was all because of a lot of folks coming in. It's something about we're such a giving society 
that we give, we give, everybody wants to buy stuff and give, and that's great. That's one thing, a good thing about Louisiana. And so uh, we gave some gift cards away. We put them on the bus. I said, take them to Walmart in Monroe. <laughs> take them down to Walmart. And we gave them all. And I, sometimes when I'm in New Orleans, I'm on the street, they'll say, oh, I remember when you gave us some gift cards. What else? Very good. Ambulance service is good. And Simmons Sporting Goods is what? The South Largest. Is there one larger? Where is it located? In Bastrop. I mean, that's something to really, really promote, you know. And I know, uh, I, th I thought he was supposed to be here tonight, right? Is he? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got you. But that's that's significant. And now I can tell you already, one thing that comes out of there when, when you're trying to promote your community, you want to promote it based on the positive that you have. And when you when you build on your positives, you can help a lot of your negatives and your challenges that you have and, and also some of the threats as well. Okay, what else? I wish they would take a couple more, but... You're going pretty strong, so we don't want to limit you. What else? Okay, airport. You have an airport. I've been out there. I've never been out there until I started uh, working for the city. And, and so uh, I get out there, and I see. And what else out there? Thank you. Industrial Park is out there. That's significant as well. <laughs> Taking the Cook College. Technical college is there. And then there's, there's something else that you have, too, that's something used to be here. It's not here anymore, but it's, uh, it's site certified, which means that it's got all the utilities. And if you market it, you promote it, you've got an opportunity to get with the governor of the state and the elected officials and say, we've got this prime property here that we need something on it. And you don't have to put infrastructure in it. And what's that? The mill site. I mean, it's already, it's site ready. Prime property. So, what else? <laughs> so you need another, just squeeze it in up, up here somewhere. Because I got, well, we got another deal there. But. The Morehouse Activity Center? Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's the, the rodeo and yeah. Yeah. That was at one time they all used to come to Monroe and now it's got caught well where we we allowed uh, some bicycle folks, B Max, to go in there. But with the B Mac with uh, activity center there and then the Ike and then some other places. And that's what progress is all about. Okay. What else you have? Nobody mentioned Walmart? Is that a positive here? Okay. Yeah, they give jobs, and, you know, and I hear about, you know, they take jobs away and so, but that's what, 200 jobs? Okay. Okay. All right, we'll put that up there, too. Anybody mention hotels? How many hotels you got? Hotel, four hotels. What about? <laughs> can, can we get some tonight? <laughs> country cream. Now, yeah, country cream. Now, we're talking about the one here in Maroon. <laughs> oh, man, I grew up on that, man. Golly, that's how I got it like this. I used to be skinny, Sheriff. Yeah. Country cream. Uh, what about restaurants? Home cooking. Let's put home cooking restaurants. I think for the size, it's excellent. You know, I get to drive around a lot now and see what all you, all is here. And I know some some of the council members said, "Well, we need some more restaurants. We need," but you know, you got a good mix. 
You can always stand and you know, get some oil, but you got a good mix already. Okay, what else? We'll do a couple more and then we'll go to the rest. A municipal center. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. Okay. But how many parks do we have? Okay. 16? Is that many? Wow. That's a lot. Neighborhood parks. Okay. So we're here for economic development, also uh, health care and education. Um, we don't want to slight any because let's deal with the educational piece as well as um, the economic development. You, you got Ms. Ford, you got a Chamber of Commerce here. Also, Ms. King, you got economic development organization. Aren't those positives? Well, should that be up here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, well, what about education? Mr. Gray, and uh, Mr. Estes, I believe, he's left. You got to, we mentioned the um, schools, I think we mentioned the, did we mention the school system? Yeah, okay. Well, the whole school system, because that consists of, what, elementary, junior high, and everything. You got the, God just, Mr. Estes just left here. You got community college here? Yeah, Head Start. <laughs> Great. No, Mr. Matthews, <laughs> want to get that up there, definitely. Early childhood is very important. And, a, right, if a kid can't read by the time he's third grade or she's third grade, what happens? They're already left behind. They're already doing studies, right? They're doing studies about how many kids are going to end up in prison if they can't by third grade. My grandson is fourth grade. Yeah, that's, that is significant. Anything else? And there will be a lot of others, but this is a very, very good list here. And like I say, we, everything that I had on my list, and I know Melvin has researched some things. Did we miss anything? Okay. Good senior care community. Yeah. Very good police, Jerry. Get his man a raise. No, he can't give him a raise. <laughs> Very good police, Jerry. Okay. Diverse businesses here in Morehouse Parish in Bastrop slash Morehouse Parish. Okay. Oh, what was that again? Okay, I think, do we have that? Okay, Council of Aging. Okay. Okay, one or two other things, and then we'll go to. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned Drax because Okay. 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 Okay, Drax, very important. Um when they came here it was initially what sixty? It's up to them now about yeah. Good. And then there's another one too. Thank you. DG Foods. Yeah. Now, how many folks know about all of these when they say uh, Bastion Morehouse Parish? I was somewhere the other day, and so you know there's more job opportunities here, and it's much smaller than Bastion than it is, and they use Bastion as, I said, well, are you sure about that? And then they started naming off uh, places, but when they named off the places, they were places that's very highly recognized, and that's because they market those places. But when you're hidden and you're in the wilderness and nobody said anything about it, you know, who knows about it? And then even the people here in the community, if it's not perpetuated in a positive way, who knows about it? So those are Drax and DG Foods. That's really good. In fact, I didn't know where, I knew about Drax, heard about DG Foods. 
until uh, we had a chance to bring a company out in Industrial Park. And then I rode around. I said, oh, okay, that's, that's DG Food, because I didn't know where it was. Okay, we'll go ahead into the... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. What about the Courthouse Square? Is that positive? I remember we used to have pep rallies. We'll put that on. We had, used to have pep rallies, and that, w that was the socializing place. I still see that, Mayor, don't you, they still have a lot of activities there at the Courthouse Square. Mayor, Mayor Hawkins, remember when we had that football team in, what, 72, 73, and they used to have the pep rallies in the Courthouse Square. I was in ninth grade, a fellow by the name of Don Doty, he was my wide receiver. And they brought us over from the junior high. I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> they brought us over and let us dress out because uh, Billy Fershaw got hurt. They wanted us to come, come over and, and uh, practice with them. Bobby Brazier and those guys. That was the year that they had that great team. But they couldn't beat Neville. But we did. <laughs> okay, let's go to the weaknesses. The weaknesses I like to call the challenges that we have here. No. Lack of positive media coverage. I think that's the best one to show because all the things that we've talked about and people know you for what they see and what they hear. I think that's excellent. So I can... I can write a book on some of the things that we attempted to do. <laughs> some of it worked, some of it didn't. The media has an agenda too. Don't ever forget that. I ain't scared. <laughs> Say that. What else? Very good. And that's that's tough when you don't have that. I think you're. Um, the, the, the person that, I, I believe the Morehouse Parish and the city, I don't know about, the, I guess the police jury too, you have the Watchtower Citizen as your official journal. Now, Watchtower Citizen is 35 miles away, 40 miles away. Yeah, and not the Morehouse Citizen, right? <laughs> okay, very good. What else? Okay, okay, we said, okay, let's put crime up and then say, recreation for the children. Now you have six parks and expound on that. Okay. She makes a very good point. I don't know if you heard her, heard her, but in educating our children, that old saying, what, it takes a village? And so you, we have our educators here, superintendents, school board members, in which you um, educate during the hours, but then there are other things that occur as well. And so what happens when they leave school? You know, I saw a young child today coming up here Ms. Gray, and I don't know how this happened. I said, that looks like Tyler. You know, he's nine years old. He was walking on the sidewalk on, on 165. And he was on the sidewalk, but he's a little bitty fella. I went, oh, my God, you know, that's a busy. So what happened? So I think that's pretty significant. What else? Okay. The need for more major industry. Okay. What Yeah. 
Well, when you mentioned affordable houses, I immediately went to what you said previously about the fact that you can afford a house compared to some other places. And in Atlanta, they were saying that, they were calling that um, livable housing. Because when you say affordable, people automatically think that you're talking about low to moderate income, which is needed. Yeah. Okay. A need for urban renewal. Um, and that's happening everywhere. I know it's happening in Monroe, where um, it's becoming a higher percentage of, of rentals. And you really do need a balance, particularly more home ownership. And, and when you have home ownership, you have a pride of ownership, and people will have a tendency to Test take better care. I'm not saying those that are leasing or renting. I'm not saying that they don't have the pride, but when you own something, you look at a, a, a two, nice three. car. You look at a nice car that a person has, and uh, they're going to take care of that car. They just bought it. They're going to shine it up because they own it or they're about to own it. What else? Lack of new home construction in in Bastrop. Any new sub new subdivisions recently? Just one, two, three. Okay. Okay. What else? On my way here today, I, I came by Eastside School, which breaks my heart because I was the principal there for 14 years. And to see that school just in decline, and it, it just kills me. But the street that runs beside Eastside School, there are some families that live in very decent homes in that area. And there are two right there at the back of the credit union that they need to be leveled, and it, it can make all of that look more appealing. So, okay, uh, what about dilapidated structures, both Urban houses, uh, businesses, schools? How many schools do we have that's vacant now? And, and see, and that becomes, I know it becomes a political issue about this shouldn't have a that, but when decisions are made and you gotta make certain decisions, about whatever because of whatever when you're trying to go within your budget. I know that becomes a political issue, but the fact of the matter is whether it's, it's good, bad, or indifference or whatever the case may be, you still got to deal with it, right? You still have to deal with it. So with these um, structures, and then also uh, what about tall grass? We call it obnoxious growth. Got a lot of tall grass? Okay, so dilapidated buildings, and uh, instead of saying obnoxious growth, we'll say uh, tall grass or weeds. Okay. Oh, I, w I was just mentioning the trash on the side of the road. Okay, and trash on the side of the road. And, and that is a deterrent as far mm -hmm. as I can see. You know, when you drive through, and, and because that means people don't care. And right. you want to be in a community where people Is that mostly in when you're coming into the commercial part of it, or in the neighborhoods, or both? I think it's both. It's everywhere. Okay. And it's sad. Okay. that's something that can be taken care of. Okay. Now, oftentimes, we say, well, public works. Public works needs to take care of it. The city needs to take care of it. And they have a responsibility, but again, that's where the good people, that's where the organizations, that's where people band together and say, let's do this. I know you got to keep 
Morehouse Beautiful Organization. But then that's still not enough. You got to have a combination of folks saying, yes, we're going to do this. And we put together the strategy. We need everybody involved. We need the police jury. We need the, the hospital, the health care folks. We need the school board. We need, we need everybody involved to help with some of these challenges that we have. Because again, if you look up best practices with different folks, you see that going on everywhere. What else? Thank you, Mayor, for helping with the mic. Now, I notice every time when we get to the challenges, you know, in different places, the strength is not a problem. <laughs> the threats, I mean, the opportunity is not a problem. But then when we get to the weaknesses and opportunities, people tend to, oh, okay, get a little tight. Like, you ever eat salmon seed <laughs> that make the jaws all tight? <laughs> Okay, need more security in the, in the stove. And if you remember, everything that you say we're putting up here is not a bad answer to everything, so thank you. Okay, what else? Go ahead on step, no, we're not. But one of the things we fall victim of, victim to is at the department, lack of funds. Our, our pay is so low that mm -hmm. a lot of guys would rather go and try Monroe, Washita Paris because they make more money than do we do to start. Okay. So uh, that's that's a manpower issue as well. Okay. You know? Lack of funds. Lack of funds within. You said in one particular area, and uh, we're talking about our starting pay. Yes. Okay, in the fire department, or you talking about public? Okay. Yeah. You know, it just hampers us from trying yeah. to hire someone. Yeah. I was out at the which way on Main Street? I oh, hold it, man. I'm sorry. Uh, out on the which way of Main Street uh, for Halloween, and a young guy came by that I knew. A young guy, mm -hmm. you know, used to play football with my son or whatever. <laughs> And I mentioned to him, how would you, man, have you ever thought about working for the fire department? You know, we're hiring right now. We mm -hmm. use some nice young men. Uh, he asked me, you know, what was our starting pay? And, you know, I had to embarrassingly tell him, you know, it's basically minimum wage. Oh, man, I make $19 an hour. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't come. Yeah. I said, well, you keep making that $19 yeah. an hour. I can't tell you to leave that alone. You know. Yeah. So that's an issue, mm -hmm. you know. I say lack of funds and manpower. Yeah. And, you know, lack of manpower funds, uh, one of the things when I first came and I was at a cleanup at the uh, Keep Morehouse over there on, uh, um, at the park over there um, by Richard Hall, Rich Hall, where he lived. <laughs> Forest, yes, <laughs> thank you. And that came up, you know, with public safety. Now, there's a challenge everywhere with the number of, um, of employees getting good people leaving because, you know, we passed a sales tax that was in addition to the pay with the city of Monroe in 2005, and that's the same issue. The Monroe Police Department is having the same issue where they're down to one of the lowest level in terms of number of police. Now, that may not be reported, but that's a fact. You know, the fire department, you know, they've got... They've been bumped up, but they still say they're underpaid. So that's understandable. However, with the Chamber of Commerce here, and this is part of a strategy, how about shop locally? Now, I heard, uh, I've heard both mayors, Mayor Cotton and also Mayor Olive, because of the pandemic, people were staying at home. You weren't moving around a lot. So you were spending money, and then with the American Rescue Plan, all that money that was coming in, People were shopping locally. So guess what that was? That was a boost, big boost to the economy. The uh, PPPs, all of that has contributed to local economies. And, and that's what it's all about. But when you don't have them, we still need you. Now, when I was mayor, I wanted you to come to Monroe. <laughs> I'm not the mayor anymore. <laughs> I'm working for Bastrop now, so I want you to stay in Bastrop. <laughs> I want you to stay in Bastrop and shop locally. 
And, and when you do that, every time that you go somewhere and you spend something, that's a positive, you know, for the city of Bastrop and Morehouse Parish. And so when that increases, then you got the opportunity to maybe give more raises. But if you're spending money everywhere else, and then your revenue is going down, your expenditure is going to keep, continue to do what? They're going to go way up. And you got to deal with it. It was a challenge for the mayor and council members, you know, to try to keep that going and try to be as equitable as they possibly can with all of the departments with things that need to be done. Okay. What else? Low income area. Low income area. Okay. What else? We'll move along pretty quickly. The edge. Uh, perception, whether it's reality or perception, there is a uh, perception of decline in the education system. Okay. Perception of decline in the education system. Um, I saw on the uh, last time I checked Morehouse Parish, I was looking at the um, the math rate, literacy rate, and I was looking at there was another rate that I was looking at, and they were really really low. And so when people go on and see those type things that somebody else has put on there, guess what happens? So when you get into these disagreements, which you're going to have disagreements, and what happens then, and you can't come together to work together, but then in your community is taking a turn, what happens? You know, population-wise, I know what Bastrop used to be when we were growing up, what was it, 15, 16,000? 17,000, you know, so um, those things, you take a look at them, you know what the, and I know that police jury, school, school system, and the city, and everybody is trying to do your best, but is it the best in terms of working together and dealing with these issues that we have? Okay, what else? Now? These are weaknesses and challenges. Lack of certified teachers in the school system. Good. Now, I know we have the dean here, too. We won state. How many years we won state in a row? Three years in a row they took one from? Yeah. We, um, we won, uh, it's not going to make people in Monroe happy. In fact, some of them still didn't vote for me at, uh, in the Neville District. <laughs> they still hadn't forgotten that many years ago when we beat them, Mr. Matthews. <laughs> so, uh, but the bottom line, though, is when you've got a, a healthy football team, you know, West Monroe, how do you think that they built their whole community because of their football program and it builds the whole community? So when we, support, when we support sports in the community, it just catapults, you know, your, your well-being of your, your particular community. It did it when we were here. It did it when you won state, which was higher than what we did in football. But when in basketball, you know, everybody was talking about basketball, even some of the old timers now. Yeah, I remember when you was on that basketball team. and Y'all used to beat all of us in Monroe. Yeah, well, we... We have some good kids, good coaches, good community support and everything. But all that's important. Now, and I'm a, I'm a, this is the elephant in the room because I hear it a lot. You know, the charter school and the Morris Parish School. So how do you deal with that here? You know, you have the charter school with Bigman, and I hear all the sayings about it, but how do you deal with it? How do you, because the charter school is there, it's here. So what happens to the uh, Morris Parish? Well, it's in Morris Parish, but it happened, what happened to the uh, school here, say the we, public school? That's what I'm trying to say. What happens? Do we just sit around and say, well, we don't, we're not going to work to see what we can do to improve, to attract more students, uh, to get, keep stu students from coming, work really hard to get certified teachers and and again, these are not easy things, but they have to be taken care of, have to be dealt with. What else? 
th this might not make sense, but th there appears to be a deterioration of community values. Well, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And that's kind of overarching yeah. all of the stuff that we've been yeah. saying about mm -hmm. the trash and right. attitudes and negative stuff. Yeah. But, and I don't know how you would phrase that in a written form or not. Okay. Deterioration of uh, community the, uh, values. The appearance of that. The now, appearance. Saying, of, I don't okay. know if that's factual or not. What about, uh, you mentioned in, uh, the lack of newspaper. Oh, okay, Pastor. Sorry, I was about to say uh, inadequate uh, lighting, uh, quality lighting. In certain uh, neighborhoods, it is extremely dark. And uh, I know that light will deter a uh, whole lot of crimes. No doubt about it. They have more lighting. Right. More lighting. Now, actually, coming into um, Bastrop from Sterling to Monroe, you know, there's some poles up there already. Some of the lights are out. And probably need some, not probably need some more lights, lighting there because it is a deterrent to, to crime. But also coming in, if it's dark coming in, you know, people, especially at night, it may not feel that way with, with you all with, uh, who actually live here. You may not pay that much attention to it, but it's very, very important. Can I speak to that? Yes, sir. And this goes back to the statement I made earlier about the communication. And this is going back. There was a time when the police department used to ride and they would register and note on certain days of the week, they would note the street lights that were out. Energy and the police department changed that. Now, in order to report a street light out, you have to call energy, go to the pole, get the number off that pole and tell energy and supposedly they will send somebody out to do it. There's a light at the corner of Louis Street in West Madison, which leads into my neighborhood Mm -hmm. And I've called them two months ago, and they have not done anything about it. So the communication piece, if we had that adequate capacity to communicate this to our citizens, at least they might register that. But then our next step is to get with energy and, and require them to fulfill their obligation because of their franchise agreement. So what happens when we don't do all of that as a community? When we say, if this is a priority for the community, and we need to make it a priority, right? Because when, they, when they're changing their policies and so forth, if nobody is saying anything, do we sometimes, whether it's government, business, education, sometimes we want to do something, we change because of the call out from the community? You know, we have to make that a, a priority uh, to get them. I have um, the customer service manager in my phone. I always call him time something happens. He usually calls me back. I tell him, I said, man, I'm out of office. I appreciate you calling me back. <laughs> but to get them to, to act, if they know that there is a, uh, a big conglomerate of, um, of citizens that's coming together to, to make things happen, that will happen. So that's very good. What else? Weaknesses we're talking about. What about the sales taxes here? Is that 9.950? Is that a weakness or a challenge? Okay, it is a, it is a weakness. What can you do about it? Monroe's gone to, to that too, about a 9.99, and can you charge 9.99? I won't tell you what some folks are doing. <laughs> Can your uh, cash register charge 9.99? <laughs> All right, we'll get off of that. <laughs> you know, when you start, and I, I shouldn't have the microphone. I shouldn't have it. But when, when you start talking about financing, it's the way that government is financed, which mm -hmm. government, if it had the proper financing, it wouldn't have, Chief Crowder wouldn't have a problem with the fire department. Mm -hmm. The police department wouldn't have a problem. The not obnoxious weeds and growth. So the way that financing for government is structured in Louisiana is a hindrance. That's a weakness mm -hmm. because there's only so much, there's only, there are only so many resources that you can get finances for to support the government to do the stuff that people need to improve communities. So it's a vicious, vicious cycle. 
Very good point. I was looking at Atlanta's budget. I think I know Atlanta's budget better than I do Monroe's budget now. And I was looking at theirs, and most of your biggest city, their uh, biggest revenue stream is property tax. And they, they charge a whole lot. We're, you're talking about blessed. We're really blessed here compared to what they pay uh, with uh, property taxes in some of the largest cities. With homestead exemption and so forth, that's pretty significant. One or two more, and then we'll go to the opportunities and, uh, opportunities and threats. And what you'll find is that your strength and your opportunities are like first cousins or twins because you, you see what your opportunities are that you may not be taking advantage of or you wanting to take advantage of. Any other weaknesses? Okay, we'll go to the opportunities. I want to recognize uh, Mr. Green, our city council member who's here. Thank you for coming. Um, I just got one. Okay. Um, I, think, I think someone said it earlier about local shopping. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think we don't do, uh, I don't think we push our local shopping enough. Um, just going up the road to Ruston, they actually have a person that pushes local shopping all the time, social media wise. I don't know if we had it or not, but they come down to every shop and make sure they know something, the owners, stuff like that, to make sure that everybody's shopping local. They put on events, stuff like that. I don't see that in Bassard. Okay. Um, and I think that's a weakness that, that, that right there will bring us together. Like I was in a meeting just like this this morning in Ruston and they made sure I was there. Um, so I think we need to do that more often, not just because we're having problems. Mm -hmm. There's something that we can get together all the time and outside of the um, Chamber of Commerce. It's really, we said we have the historic district. Mm -hmm. We should be trying to push everybody in the historic district and not just them, the other local uh, businesses around. So okay. I think that's the witness. We think, lack, I think we need to Lack get, of uh, shopping locally. Well, lack, not just shopping local, su supporting each other and I don't want to say a committee, but someone that, that controls that. We don't have that person that brings us together to make us shop local. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, shop, uh, I mentioned the, the chamber because normally there's a mechanism that's in place to say, okay, we're going to have this, this deal. And it could be the chamber. It could be a combination of of everybody. In fact, it works well when you have, if you got the government folks and the educational folks, and you're doing a doing a press conference or whatever the case may be, and saying, well, we're uh, we're pushing shop shopping locally. Be why? Because this is what's occurring that we see that our sales taxes are going up, and also not only sales taxes or revenue for the city, but also your businesses. You got small businesses, which is the meat of any community. You got small businesses that need your help. You know, I, I, I say to Mayor Olive, when I come up here, I've got about seven big notebooks. And so I go out and I go to Walmart <laughs> and pay my share, pay my tithes, so to speak, Pastor Green. <laughs> then I may stop at the barbecue place, of, as you can tell. <laughs> And uh, Popeye's, because my thing is, it's not a matter of coming and taking and then going back somewhere else. So I said a new leadership got to be responsible for <laughs> you know, another place. Uh, not here, I'm saying, but in Monroe. Okay, we got two. Okay, we'll go here and then we'll go back over here. Mr. Christmas? And if we were able to use it constructively, it'd be the greatest thing in the world. I'm glad you said that. that. And I thought about this and then forgot it. But, but uh, I think they said uh, a lack of a... But my, the, the enterprise was the biggest. It kept yeah. our community together. Right. We all read it. We all looked forward to everything that he would do, right or wrong. <laughs> we, we utilized our paper and enjoyed right. it. And we've lost it, y'all. 
No it's local newspaper, it. I think you said. No local newspaper. But an, another one is the s social media. Is that good or bad? That's right. It, it, it can be good, <laughs> but it can be bad, too. What is the most, bad or good? Bad. <laughs> well, we need to add that to that. <laughs> now, how do you deal with that? I don't know, but... but I'll read uh, it. <laughs> Again, if you don't have if you don't have the uh, local newspaper, but then you have to use the alternative. You know what's going on with everybody. What's going on with the hospital? What's going on with the school? Positive the things that have happened with the school system. Um, Ms. Evans, things that you got going on in your building, and what's going on with the health care share. And not everything is about putting people in jail, right? What type of programs that you have with the police, jury, and on and on and on and the faith-based community, things that you're doing. And I see a lot of things because I always check some of the sites. I go to the mayor's site a lot to see what's going on to keep me up with things that's going on. But you've you got to use social media in the best way. you got young folks. Look, in here, I don't know how they got in here. Maybe I shouldn't say this, Sheriff, let's see. Sheriff, but I saw a video that was, it must have been homecoming. Must have been 2,000 folks in here in this place. Where all of them were, all I could see was people. So somebody made a killing. <laughs> About 2,000 in here. So I said, Where did they all come from? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have an opportunity uh, from a gentleman by the name of Aldwin. Um, he said, Opportunity is to allow adjudicated property uh, to be, a, a, be available to. Um, overall businesses, small businesses, and development companies. Okay. Take, a, take advantage of adjudicated properties. Okay, good. And I know that there's a list. You have a list of adjudicated property here. Very good. Okay, what else? Establish a local podcast. That's what she's saying, podcast. Now, that seemed to be the, what everybody's doing in the 21st century. Or was they making a lot of money off it? Ms. Evans? Okay. Okay. It, it was said earlier, there are opportunities to uh, establish or implement some more activities or programs for the youth. Okay. What other opportunities? Ms. Tapping? Young people and old people who have, who, are, who have a vested interest in Morehouse Parish, who were born and raised here and who are doing well now, to get them to come home and contribute. Get, uh, you know, talk to them and get them to understand that we need their help too because this is where they got their start. So we need uh, people who have a vested interest, our young people that are in education, get mm -hmm. them to come home and work and work with our children. Well, you know, when you, when you Google notable people in Morehouse Parish, boy, you see a lot of folks that come up. Um, we were just talking about that on the way up here. Uh, Ms. Coleman, he... He was, uh, he's worldwide, Mr. Ms. Olympia. It, miss, it mentions somebody by the name of Stacy Hawkins. You know who he is? <laughs> yeah, his name was on there. Calvin Nett, Kenny Nett. Kenny Nett has moved back to the area, and I think he's meeting with the mayor with, here coming up uh, on a project here, and one of them's been mentioned earlier. I won't let the kid out of the bag, but... Somebody mentioned a project that was needed. He and some other folks that he's partnering with. That partnership is very important. Partnership. And when I when I did, a, Ms. Tappan asked me, Mr. Gray, to be the guest speaker for the Bastrop High School uh, graduation this past year. And I was looking at notable folks, and I saw I didn't know Bastrop had a governor years ago. 
before when I look around, I don't think anybody was born then, but there was a former governor that, that, that lived in Bastrop. And so looking at those folks, somebody told me that the museum, it's not a museum. At one time, they had a list of some notable folks. But we got to contact these folks and say, hey, this hometown. One thing that I thought about was trying to get my old teammates together, basketball and football players together, and say, hey, like with the school, Mr. Odom, you know, to look, a school needs our help. They recognized us homecoming a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, we're not going to be here always. What can we do while we're here? Very good. What else? Okay. Um, a marketing effort, which will come out of this, quite frankly, marketing Bastrop slash Morehouse Parish, <coughs> in which we, we think of, um, we put together a plan of action to uh, promote or market our parish, Morehouse Parish. Now, the negative part, I just believe that it's some folks' agenda that that's all they live for, right? <laughs> that's all they live for. We don't have to call no names. <laughs> we know who they are. That's all they live for. That's what their whole being is about, negativity, to tear down. But how is that helping? Will you ever get them to stop? I was sharing with, on the way in, we were sharing about when we were playing, I'll make this real quick. We were talking about my junior year when Mike Vining was our coach at Bastrop High and, and Mary Hawkins used to be the announcer, used to call us out, you know, when we go out to the store and line up, in our junior year, we played zone. You remember this, Mr. Hawkins? When we, uh, we lost in the quarterfinals, I believe, because they held the ball on us because we were playing the zone. Made you foul. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that was uh, Leon Barlow. Anyway, it was 45-39 it was score. I never forget, they held the ball on us because we had a 6'10", Carl Kilpatrick, and then we had Lolly, we had Calvin, and they held the ball on us because we were playing the zone. Because we had so many big guys that in, didn't include me, but they had to hold the ball and they beat us 45 to 39. We were averaging probably about 80 or 90 points a game. Because Mike Vining, who was coach, <clears throat> said at the time, he said, I'll never play another zone. He said, I'm going to press from now on. So our next year class, we lost that one game in Ruston. We pressed the whole game. We would be folks about 30 and 40 points. And we didn't give them a chance to come up the floor. They couldn't hold the ball because we were pressing them. So what am I saying with that? So we can't allow for the negativity to dictate our being. We can't allow for a minority part of the community that's involved in engaged in negativity to shape our community by itself. We have to press our community by all these positive things that you're listening tonight. In the, in the package that we put together, together, uh, that'll override big time. Because you give, you give people something else to talk about. Now, I know if it bleeds, it leads. I understand that. And I know a lot of times, you know, the media will cover negativity a lot. Now, I'm not saying that they don't do some positive things, but a lot of times you're going to get a lot of negativity. But if they're not doing it, we have to figure out a way to do it. That's the bottom line. Yes, sir. As far as it comes to education, mm -hmm. we talk about career uh, and college readiness in education. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, great opportunity that we have with Delta coming in, mm -hmm. we need to uh, really focus on the kids that may be weak, like you mentioned earlier in those mathematic areas. Mm -hmm. uh, when God created us, he, all didn't, he didn't create us all with the same ability to learn. So we have to be able to promote uh, other things than just college. Right. We need to provide opportunity for kids that have other skills other than going to college. That, that's one of the things that we need to take advantage of here in Morehouse Parish. When the mill went down, a lot of people that made a lot of money, they couldn't read and write, mm -hmm. but they were very prosperous. And we have a lot of kids in this community. I, I, I was a part of that JTPA program where, you know, right. they had right. opportunities right. to work. Well, they taught us how to work. 
these kids don't have that drive to want to make their own money and things. This is a great opportunity for us with the welding, uh, carpentry, masonry, plumbing. These are very good jobs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in education, we, we just push that part of it, the college part. Well, we, 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 it's reality. Not everybody's made to go to college. But, but we can promote that. Mm -hmm. But this is a great opportunity for us to open up doors for other kids, teach them, train them up in other areas so that they can be prosperous and be productive citizens in this community. Okay, we have the community mentioned the technical. Do we have that now in Moise Parish? And if you have people that are willing to work with them and get out there and actually spend time with them, then you will see a different child. Mm -hmm. As long as we're not doing our part, they're not going to do their part. And we're all in here together, but we're older. They're our future. So we need to be preparing them. If we want to see a better bash trip, we have to prepare them. We've already made our mark. We've already done what we're doing as far as adults and in our careers, individually or whatever you're doing. But we have to equip these children and these youths to know that they can do it as well. All of these abandoned buildings around here, there could be a trade school, there could be a boys and girls club, there could be something for the, the smaller kids to equip them to do. You have people that have their own businesses, car washes, um, uh, they uh, changing oil they you know you have people doing everything and you don't have them going out there to get the children to teach them the skills you have plumbers you have all this money that the the government has given everybody and they're not using it toward the children as they should but if we do our part as far as is it, whether it's funding whether you get out there and you say or you go to the the um wherever they're working at just put your foot in forward too so that they'll know that everybody is working together because each individual person cannot do it alone it takes a village that's why we're all here together so i think we should if we concentrate on the youth here rather than concentrating on of course all of the other issues are issues too but the youth is where it starts and they're they're lost they're completely lost and we need to step up do we hear a little passion out of that? <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Um, you were talking about the uh, other opportunities, skills, and so forth. What percentage of uh, the graduates go to college? Yeah. So what happened to the, say twenty? Miss King said twenty-five percent. So you're looking at what seventy-five percent that they're doing what? You make a good point about the ones that, that were um, probably couldn't read or write. Um, I, have, I have relatives that didn't go to college. They worked at the mill and did very, very well. Couldn't read until they got to the sixth grade and then, then uh, was able to um, make a good living. So that makes them. But are we talking about that more? Are we pushing that or are we all just pushing go to college? Very good point. In fact, um, I think we need to sign. Any, you are Miss. I know. <laughs> I just wanted to get the right name, <laughs> Miss Downs. I know what her other name is, <laughs> but um, that's what we need. We need everybody. The passion that you have about things, and when you talk about the negativity, and that's okay. That, but then what are you going to do about it? Okay. What else? couple other opportunities we go to threats that won't take long it's 725 and we try to get you out in the next 10 minutes what other opportunities can't think of any more and and again remember that it's first cousins with the opportunities and the strengths you can put that together now what you're going to see is between the, the the crime part that we did the uh, beautification and then here with education, health care, and economic development. And by the way, because we've heard this a lot to the youth, we did one with some youth, too. We did a separate one with youth. In fact, that was the first one we did. We got in with the youth. And it was interesting, some of the things that they said about the strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threat. And that was from their perspective. 
So they weren't in with folks that are here that's been around a while and so forth. They had an opportunity to do their and say their own. So I, I found that pretty significant, but that's going to be incorporated in this as well. I, I think an opportunity is the fact that the 50 or 40 or whatever it is of us that are here tonight, we each see the enthusiasm, the passion, and the sameness of each other. I think that opportunity needs to be taken advantage of and form a foundation from here since all of us seem to be wanting to go in the same direction of building collaborations and coalitions and go forward. To me, this is a grand opportunity because of this session. No doubt about it. And, you know, I, I even heard one person already say, well, you can go and do this, but ain't nothing going to happen. Well, that person that said that is not here tonight, which is good. Because if you have that attitude about it, you don't need them here. You're here because you want to make a difference. And so we're going to make a difference. I guarantee you that. You're going to make, going to make a difference. You're already making a difference because everything is not lost. It's just our job to make sure, just to remind you of some of the good stuff that's going on that you can build on and also some of the challenges that you can build on as well. One or two other opportunities. We mentioned uh, Simmons Sporting Goods, two major highways coming through, or how many? Three or four, I think we said. Downtown Square. I think each way that you come into Bastrop, aesthetically, in my opinion, looks pretty good. One of the challenges, in my opinion, is coming in from the west side. That can be improved. Coming in from Sterlington and Monroe. Shop Bastrop. How about an incubator? I mean, I think I mentioned that to Ms. Evans. Do we have an incubator here? We can get the money for a building, but it's the operating cost. You know, yeah. maybe a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to operate a business incubator. So that's been the hold up there. It it, it does get back down to money. Mm -hmm. You know, it is about money. You know, I call the I think the state office is in Monroe. They have an incubator place that's in one of the uh, buildings that they have. In fact, I was doing business with about three of the businesses in there. It's a really really nice setup. But think about those that's just starting out business and they can't invest what normally a small business person have to invest. And you got an incubator here. In fact, I just got a call the other day where some people, and I shared that with the mayor, that wanted me to check on some, uh, some funding opportunity for an incubator here in, in Bastrop because we really need that. Because you have a lot of people have ideas and they're trying to put together a business plan, but not all of them are able to go to the bank and get thousands of dollars that they need, but they need a place to start, and then they can perhaps grow out of that into what they need. Very, yeah, whatever capital they have when mm -hmm. they start their business, I've seen it now for years that they're drained quickly right. of all of their capital yeah. and then we get these small businesses they go in and then they go out and, and it's just really hard for people to start a business um, in a, you know with all of the sure. requirements and mm -hmm. even uh, regulations and things that have people have to adhere to and uh, but they do get drained of their capital pretty quickly no, no doubt about it very good. What else? I'm trying to read my own writing. So I get to more and more people coming around wanting to uh, start a business and a rental for for a, a location now for nine years. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. more and more young people right here. That makes me feel good. There's yeah. there's some people putting forth an effort to start be self-employed and start a business. I feel good about it. The new soul food restaurant. 
Oh, yeah. A soul food restaurant? We don't have one here? Yeah. I don't. There is one. Yeah, we have a need. Oh, really? We, we have a need oh. for people, like young people can do, like consultants for websites and things, mm -hmm. or computer. I mean, it, it's really difficult to get people uh, to do some of these technical type things for you. I'll bring my nine-year-old grandson up here. <laughs> Everybody knows, the kids, I, we ask my grandson anything we need to know, but uh, technologically opportunities that, that we need to uh, take advantage of because that's where we are now, right? Another opportunity, I think we have a pretty good internet system here at uh, mm -hmm. Capacity. It's relatively good. Mm -hmm. So businesses that have that orientation can locate or local folks who want to get into that can establish themselves here because we have in some areas, some fairly good speed. Okay, so um, the internet is prevalent here for the most part. Um, what about broadband? I know that's one of the key keys uh, with a lot of these students, particularly in the rural areas. Everything is computer technology, and if they don't have access to it, that's a that's a problem. That hurts. Well, out in a lot of our outlying areas, we have mm -hmm. Northeast Tail, and we've got some of the fastest internet access in rural areas that anyone in Northeast Louisiana, or anyone in Northeast Louisiana has, but nobody knows about it. So mm -hmm. getting back into getting the word out, but we could have people start businesses, mm -hmm. um, in, in all of those businesses in Bonita mm -hmm. and Collinston, those feed, they'll feed Bastro, just mm -hmm. like all of the outlying areas feed Monroe. Mm -hmm. They can feed Bastro. Mm -hmm. But we have good, fast access internet. I just had a call from AT&T in the downtown area. And right now, I had, I think I had 18 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And I can get 100 megabytes now for $15 a month more. I mean, the... They're constantly working on the, the um, broadband here. I, I think there are isolated areas like Beekman down 139, which is unfortunate because that's a, a growing area down 139 towards Swartz. But we have these pockets mm -hmm. uh, out where Clarence Hawkins lives. His internet's pretty slow out on 165. So we have pockets of internet access that's not good, but we're working on it. So and internet is slow in Sugar Hill? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the chipmunk on the wheel doesn't run very fast sometimes. We're going to change the name to Bitter Hill. <laughs> okay, but I didn't know that, Ms. King. I didn't know that uh, out in the rural areas that you... Yeah. I know Bob Green has a duck he has faster access internet mm -hmm. at his duck camp up there off of the Kilburn Highway than okay. he has at his house. So there's some opportunities out in the rural areas. Okay, good. We need to put that. Because we're in, here in Morehouse Parish, in, in the city of Bastrop, we do, you, you heard that saying, you have to think outside the box. And we have to think outside the city limits in terms of what opportunities that we have. Uh, that's one of the reasons you know, I've heard a lot refer a lot to when I was in Monroe as a mayor of Monroe I worked a lot with the uh, other cities the mayors had a good working relationship one of the economic development organization Northeast Louisiana Economic Alliance I was a member of that I would go to Dale High wherever they had the meeting they were surprised you're a big city mayor and you coming down because what I knew is they shop in Monroe <laughs> they came to Monroe a lot they honeymoon in Monroe they did a lot of things in Monroe, and that's what it was all about. But it was always important, too, to let them know that I was concerned about them, not just because they, some of their constituents were coming to Monroe, but I wanted them to be strong, too. And so that's why when you think about those outside, it helps because you'll be surprised. Uh, do we have the visitor center? Anybody from the visitor center here? Okay. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, we need that. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Kay gives me a little bit too much credit, but but when I sit here and I and I and I kind of have been quiet and kind of just listen to what um, some of the people have said. I think one of our biggest opportunities is to capitalize on some of the economic development that's already going on. We're building um, a brand new facility. The hospital's building a new facility. You have Broken Wings that just came in and built. You've got South Star that came in not too long ago. But more importantly than that, I think that um, having been in healthcare in Bastrop for a long time, that there's a mindset within the community that healthcare services are substandard, that they're not as good as what you can get if you go somewhere else. And it's simply not true. Um, we are the only reach out and read provider within 100 miles of here. And what that means is these kids that you're talking about with their developmental screenings that are behind, they get a book every time they come to the doctor, every time we do a wellness visit, we give them a book. It's a certified program we had to go through. Um, filling out paperwork and, and following a, a, a program that ensures that kids get information, age-appropriate information at right intervals that um, spur that development that's going to help them read later in life. Um, of 1,600 health centers nationally, um, our health center was in the top 10% when it comes to quality. That is a, to me, <laughs> of course being CEO, but that's a huge achievement for, you know, you're talking about Northeast Louisiana in a, in a state where um, we're at the bottom of the list in the parishes when it comes to health care services. But we do a lot of things um, that come through those federal programs, through uh, best practices, and, and being able to bring those things um, into the parish. Um, so I think that there's a lot of opportunities um, for people to know. There's great things here in town. You don't have to go to Monroe. You don't have to go um, other places. You can you can get it here. I know there's the hospital has um, worked to bring in some specialists. Um, so there's there's a lot here when it comes to those things, and, and I think that it's just kind of like a hidden gem that people don't know about. Well, how can we make them know about it? Because that is huge. And has that been publicly done? That's that's a good question. You know, I'm not in marketing. I'm in healthcare, but. Um, you know, we have a billboard that's going to go up in a couple of weeks that has our quality awards and some things like that on it so that people know, um, you know, that we're, we, you know, we've, we've won those awards nationally for that. But um, I, I think that's a challenge um, is, is marketing and promoting. And, what, you know, I've heard people say, you know, um, how do we get people to shop in businesses? How do we get people to do those things? I mean, we have Sunday night, there's Sip and See, there's businesses that are going to be open. Um, we personally bought gift cards to all of those businesses participating so that we could give them out when people come in and spend money there. Um, you know, but I don't know. From the promotion perspective, we've shared on Facebook. We've done that. You know, be sure to let, you know, let people know. But, you know, we try to support um, those activities, but, you know, without having a newspaper or, or you know, not everybody has Facebook. Mm -hmm. So... Have the news people come in here all the time and they're constantly trying to fill their news space and we need to designate some people that are good speakers to go down there to KNOE to these morning things and talk about the great things that are going on here but I'm telling you the first time I ever heard uh, Katie talk about trying to want to do programs to teach people to rock babies and some things that it really made an impression on me and I've been working on this. Well, you, you have. Go ahead. And, and so I have one more thought. And so I want to plug the um, our school-based health center program. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I have schools that come to us, you know, begging us to come in and do school-based health centers. The very first two that we did were right here in Morehouse Parish. We've got one at Bastrop High School. We've got one at the elementary school. And I think that means a lot of things. Um, for our parish. It means that a mom who needs to be at work doesn't have to leave to come check on a child that probably doesn't really need to be checked out from school. We can keep those kids in school. We can um, keep mom at work. We can keep dad at work. Um, 
or, or whoever the child's living with, but we, we have schools coming to us all the time asking for that. And um, we, we've got those um, right here in our school system, um, you know, w working with them. Um, we're helping with COVID testing, um, helping keep them safe. Um, you know, just a variety of things. But, but I think that that's important when you're, you've got a family that's moving into town, um, you, you, they're at a, a low income or moderate income, and um, what are you going to do uh, if your child gets sick? How are you going to handle those things? And, and so those services are there at the schools um, to help those kids. So. Ms. Katie was initially talking about your current businesses that are growing or projects that's going on now. We talk a lot about economic development, but you don't hear much about economic growth. Economic growth, where you're growing your community from within. If you've got a business that's adding 20 additional jobs, you may not hear a lot about that, but if it's a company coming in with 20 jobs, we get all excited. But what's the difference? I mean, you got from within, we got to do a better job of promoting what we already have is what I'm hearing. Now, you said that the, me some, the negative publicity, I think that was the first thing that was said from the media. Is there an opportunity with the media? Yeah. I think they want to fill the news program. There, there's an opportunity to, uh, whether the mainstream media, electronic, KNOE, KTVE, they have morning shows. They have, uh, you know, of course, the reporter comes out. They do, yeah, they're going to do investigative stuff, and that's part of it. But there's opportunities with them, too. You know, this, the Citizen is your uh, official journal now. Is there an opportunity to get some things done there uh, to do a special? I had a, you know, I was at the governor's state of the state address, and one of the, one of the, um, print media person came up and said, we want to do a special on a, an organization that I'm part of. So, you know, I'm a little, I don't know, is it good or bad? <laughs> but the bottom line, though, is there's opportunities to do uh, with some of these good things. But if you're complaining and these good things are not getting out there, because you do have a mechanism to get it out there. So the media, I think um, when you say the media is an opportunity, Mainstream media, I'm saying. Well, let's say mainstream and social media. Can I, can I think out of the box for a minute? Yes, sir. I think there's consensus in this room that communication is a major problem, whether it's with political bodies, whether it's with businesses, whether it's with the faith-based community, or just getting out correct information, mm -hmm. thinking outside the box. God bless the child has got his own. This is an opportunity to have a community-based newspaper starting here. I was a part of a group that bought the enterprise, and we tried to publish it, but we had some issues because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> Straight up. This is a perfect opportunity between public bodies, individuals, merchants who, who advertise, have a community-based newspaper, Morehouse Parish newspaper, contributing, letting the and, and we got to go through the technical stuff of being the, the official journal, but publish our own paper with our own news in there and you have control and you inform folks and you solve a lot of the things that we've been talking about. Just throwing it out there. That, chew on that and digest it and see if, if it's, it can't be something that can work. We have community-based newspaper and that is, that seemed to be the overall. And that's the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not having a person where you can, I mean, a mechanism where you can, you can do that. So that's something to think about that. Because how else are you going to be able to communicate some things? I agree with my fellow mayor. The newspaper is also an opportunity to show things on television. And it was a reward system for them. So I would like for us to think about that. What can we do here tonight to start a community-based newspaper? I would be willing to invest in that because communication is truly a problem here. Bad press seems uh, and distorted information hits the public domain. It only takes one person and they get the facts all twisted. So let's think that. Okay, very good point. 
a lie can go around the world before the <laughs> truth can cross the street. Okay, a couple of other opportunities, and then we'll end this. I tell you what, you guys have been great, and have pretty much stayed. I know people have different things, and Goldman Powell has gone off. <laughs> Missed that tonight. Thursday night football. Yeah, it is Thursday. Isn't it? Any other opportunities? I ain't scared. <laughs> Mr. Blackard, you've been awfully quiet tonight. You know I was going to say something. No, you, you, you and Mary are over there. <laughs> now, now he'll call me and go for a whole lot. Approach Delta and see if we can't pull together with them and support some outside endeavor to get an incubator through them because they'll uh, uh, support and come up with financing and special money grants, all kinds of stuff for that incubator that will let it grow. So that's something that we need, uh, avenue we need to go for. Very good. We already have a solution to one of the areas, right? That's good. That's it. Okay. Um, again, we're going to end up, I'm going to turn it back over to the mayor. But you, again, you've been great, your presence, your involvement, your participation, because that's what it's all about. And for those that say that nothing's going to happen, it won't be because it won't be pushed, <clears throat> not only by the mayor and the council, but also by you, because you're the leaders of the community, educationally, health care, law enforcement, and it's everybody, faith-based community. You're the leaders in this community. It's going to be as good or bad as you make it. One last anecdote, I'll say when I was, um, just go to places, and I finally got somebody to, I was going to different places like Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and I had a, police officer, you know, he, he was on executive security, I guess you could say, that would would, um, uh, would drive me down. In fact, we almost got killed one time because we had an accident back in 2010. But I would let him stay in the meetings, so he was in the meetings to hear, like when we go into these meetings with the governor and so forth, and meeting with business leaders, and he was wondering how law enforcement, how that had an impact on economic development. And so he learned pretty quickly because he would see how important that law enforcement was and is to economic development, how the fire protection is to economic development. Because if you hadn't noticed it, it all comes together, how cleanliness your, your community is. And all of it works for economic development. It's how a community looks. And some people have different interests, so you realize you get together the ones that have the different interests and put them, and not just on a committee to be on a committee, but to be on a working committee. That's the bottom line. So those of you that are in here tonight, just by, by yourselves, can make a huge difference in the city of Bastrop and Morehouse Parish. Just those of you that are here tonight, that's long that's, that are out there and want to be involved, but they're not here for whatever reason because we're only looking at a small, diverse group, but you can make a difference more of a difference, because you're already making a difference in a lot of areas, but it could be much, much better, and that's our objective. So thank you very much for your attention, your participation, and Bob. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, M5. Appreciate you so much. Let me ask you before you depart, what have you taken from this meeting tonight? It has been wonderful. Well, let me note the representation of the community. Our superintendent, we had Dr. Sanders, who is the current chief of staff for Morehouse General. We have a former chief of staff, Dr. Tim Spires. We have Katie here. The healthcare industry is well represented at real estate, grocery store, just everybody. You have played such an important role. Let's also remember Ms. Evans, Robinson Williams, they bought old schools in the community. Having retired from the school system, 
I watched for years when schools were abandoned and they would leave a hole in the community. So you're feeling a purpose and there's an opportunity there for incubators to rent space, venues, so we have a lot of alternatives. Were you gonna go over the threats? Well, okay, we won't worry about the threat. Okay. Okay. Anybody just jump in. What have you taken from this meeting tonight? <laughs> Too many teas. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Just jump in. A lot more positive? A lot more positive than we realized we had. So we've just got to embrace them. Anybody else? I've gathered from uh, this meeting is that if we network together, uh, we certainly can make Bastrop a better place. Okay. I think I've got a Bastrop Daily Enterprise sign, and I've got a location if Mr. Ivory kind of helped me foot the bill. <laughs> we have the talent in this, in this parish, in this room, to do this and other things. And, and out of this meeting, I think we're forming the collaboration, the co coalitions that are needed to do what we need to do, y'all. Okay. Body and soul. How many years have you been in operation, Mayor Hawkins? Body and soul. That's part of the health care industry. Fourteen and a half. <laughs> Fourteen and a half years. They've taken care of a lot of people. Chelsea, my daughter. Veronica, is that one of Chelsea's hats you have on? I s Revitalization of the Rose Theater. I also sold my son on the way in Monday. <laughs> <laughs> She's been shipping them all to California, too. <laughs> incubator. Okay. Right. Anybody want to say something about an incubator? Ms. Evans has a place. You have available space. Okay. Mr. Christmas? Thank you so much. Nobody has, and we, we, nobody has mentioned the competence of the Sheriff's Department in Mohouse Parish. And I, we can't leave without recognizing them to me. And I so appreciate how we coordinate together. Sheriff Tubbs, did you want to say something? You did? I'm, I'm coming at you with this microphone. <laughs> Jason? <laughs> well, it's just like everybody said, you know, I mean, the biggest thing is communication, too. Um, you know, letting 
each other know and then getting the word out. Uh, obviously, the newspaper will help, but, um, you know, there, there's other ways, too. Uh, like Mr. Mayo said, you know, uh, the news media in Monroe, TV8, they're, they're always looking to fill slots and stuff. So, hey, that's a great way. If, if somebody is comfortable speaking in public, Mayor, you're very good at uh, speaking in public. The, the times that I've seen you, you do a great job. So, you know, you're one of our major marketing tools. So. Did anybody else want to make a comment? And I'm going to tell you a funny story before I let you go. The first time I was mayor, I did what I thought was my best interview at the abandoned international paper company site. I thought I was dressed to the nine. I articulated everything I wanted to say. They asked me, what do you see when you look out at this abandoned site? I said, I see homes that were built. I see children that went to college. I said, so I want to think about the positive. So I waited for my story to air that night. It didn't come on at 5 o'clock. It didn't come on at 6 o'clock. I said, surely it will be on the 10 o'clock news. It didn't come on. So I had to call the next day and say, what happened to my story? And they said someone had escaped from the Tallulah Detention Center, so that trumped my story. <laughs> so we do have to find a way to get our own message out there because the negative will trump the positive if we allow that to happen. So if, if no one else has any other comments, I want to thank all of my staff. I want to thank each one of you. Please stay with us throughout putting this plan together. This is the beginning of this for M5 and for me because now we have to put it all together and we're going to have a booklet and we'd like to share that booklet with you and share it with all the agencies. Superintendent, did you want to have some closing remarks? I'm, well, I guess I am, so I'm just going to <laughs> I was thinking to say no, but then I realized I was making them. The one thing that I really want to, to take away from tonight personally is a group of people that actually want to see change. When you get people that actually want to see change and is working towards change, that's half of it right there, the motivation of, of getting something started, the impetus of movement. So that's what I'm taking away tonight. You got a group of people that are saying, you know what, let's don't talk about problems, let's do something about it. And that's where it all begins. So. Thank you, Superintendent Gray. Anybody else? Kick Throne, small business here. We appreciate them. Cosmetologists, we wanted to have a good cross-representation, small business and everybody. Simmons Sporting Good, your sales still going on? Okay, I'll be, I'll be there Saturday. <laughs> And Lori is a retired educator. She works for Simmons Sporting Good. Oh, great. We have an editor already. Okay. <laughs> Well, you want to close us out with a prayer, Brother Green? Let us not forget if we like wonderful uh, tennis shoes and other stuff, uh, we can get it right here in Bastard. What's the name of your business? Okay, bless the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, again, we come before you knowing that you are the God of Abel. Lord God, you said in your word that whenever we abide in your word, or if we abide in your word, God, you then said we can ask what we will. God, we pray now that you will look upon our mayor. Pray, God, that you will bless every elected official. 
God, we need you in this city. Protect us, God, and keep us like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.